Your body is art, part two. Are you enjoying yourself? A voice said from behind me. I nearly jumped and spilled my drink. I'd been looking through the books in the study. That was why my sister never took me anywhere. I always managed to lose her somewhere in the crowd. But unlike my sister, Brad had somehow managed to find me. Yes, it's a good party, I said as I turned around to face him. People don't bite, you know. You want to leave? I won't be sad, he sighed. But I could see that he looked a little bit disappointed. I was being beyond antisocial, and he had invited me to his house for this event when he did not even have to. It was just that I felt as if everyone was looking at me. I felt their eyes follow me as soon as I entered, like when my dad used to make me debate when I didn't want to. And the sea of people would make me sick. A good businessman should be a skilled orator, he used to say, but I could not find it within me to be what he wanted. Hey, are you okay? You don't seem to be here, he said. His voice brought me back from where my mind had wandered. Yes, I am here. Let us go. I promised to speak to at least one person, I said. And it can't be me or your sister, he raised an eyebrow. I could not help smiling a little bit. He was so energetic and confident, I wondered what it was like to be him. I followed him out and we were in the bustle of people once again. All my senses were instantly attacked with color and sound. It was much classier than a party, but more casual than anything formal. There were different kinds of people there, most of them deep in conversations that looked serious. I noticed that no one turned to look at me. I had been so certain that they had all been looking at me when I entered, but I guess I was seeing things. He led me to a woman who was standing on her own. Katya, this is Paris, he said. Like the city? You have a nice name, Paris, she said. Her accent sounded different, very European. She talked enough for both of us, and soon I warmed up to her. We talked about everything from art to music. It had been such a long time since I had a conversation with someone that was not small talk. The last time I had it was when I spoke to my best friend Kyle, but he was too busy with college to talk to me nowadays. Katya introduced me to a group of her friends, and soon enough I was talking to more people. Maybe it was the drinks or the general vibe of the event, but I did not feel very self-conscious. They were not as intimidating as I had thought. The attention was not only on me as I had feared. I saw Brad a few times during the evening. I could not help getting drawn to him. Watching him, that is. He looked so natural, and the bright lighting would have made for a very good painting. I felt alive for the first time in a long time. Here, among like-minded people, I did not want to leave at the end. I managed to get a few contact details from them. My sister could not stop talking about how she was surprised that I had been talking to people and having fun. It was not as bad as I thought it would be. I survived, I said curtly. She tried, but she could not hide the smile from her face. I've been trying and failing to get you to come with me to events, yet Brad succeeded after one try. Wow, I should start taking notes, she slurred. She could barely open her eyes with the way she was drunk. I was surprised that she could even form a coherent thought at all. When I got home, I was still buzzing from the night out. I had forgotten how to be reserved, somehow, when I had been at Brad's place. Well, his parents' house. I felt as if I wanted to remember this night. It had been so vivid. I had felt so alive. I could not let this fade into my past. So in the middle of the night, I got the inspiration to start painting. I was more careless with my color choices. Forgot cohesion. All I did was lose myself in the process. The lights, the people. Time flew as I painted. I was surprised when I looked out the window and saw that it was already morning. I finished up and I fell asleep right then. For the next few weeks, I spent hours with Brad. I could not help raving about the other night, and he indulged me. He and I fell into a routine. I would paint him whenever I could, and then on the weekend, I would spend time with him. He somehow succeeded in dragging me to many places that I had never been to before. You even have a job? You're always out, I asked him one day. Oh, I do. I work at a travel agency part-time. The rest of the time, I just live my life to the fullest, he grinned. And what about a partner? I asked him, as I was mixing the paint to get the right shade of his skin. I have not connected with someone in so long, actually, he said. I find that hard to believe, I said. You'd be surprised. I find it hard to settle down. I'm always on the go, and not a lot of people can handle that, he said. I get it, but, but don't you want to just be stagnant for a little bit? I asked him. Everyone sees me as this confident person who is untouchable. There is safety in that, he smiled a bit. A wall seemed to go up, and I did not probe further. He seemed to have a lot troubling him. I felt as if he was using the impromptu trips and parties to stop himself from being alone with his thoughts. I saw him, how distant he looked when he was not doing something new. He looked almost haunted. I continued to paint him, 
Then I stopped. I noticed something. I was messier with my strokes. I was more daring with the colors. I was not playing safe anymore. I had not been playing safe ever since I started hanging out with him. I was not sure if I wanted to be safe anymore. He told me to banish my fear and do something new every time. I was starting to talk more with people that I was not familiar with, and I started to see the appeal he found in adrenaline. And then, I would go home and think only of the day we had spent together. Even if it was just an hour, I had managed to make him a part of my schedule, somewhat. Even my sister was complaining that I had stolen her best friend. One night, I had just gotten home from work. I did not have a session planned with him. Then I got a message from my father. We were not on bad terms, but he barely ever spoke to me. He told me that he heard that my paintings were going to be put in the gallery, and that he would be there on the day. I got a lot of mixed emotions when I read his message. I had been trying to be good enough for him all my life. I had been trying to convince him that my art was good enough, and here he was, coming to scrutinize me on my most important night of my life. I started to breathe very heavily, my mind scrambling. I was scared and angry. What if I messed up, and he told me once again that I would fail at art? I needed Brad. He would be able to tell me something positive and motivate me. I sent him a quick text and he was there in less than 10 minutes. Are you okay? You look like you might faint, he asked. I broke down and I told him everything that had happened between me and my parents. How I had left to try to make something of myself, yet years later I had nothing to show for it. I never opened up to anyone. I let my feelings eat me up until they went away. But it was different with him. He had been patient with me and slowly coaxed me out of my shell. I trusted him because he had told me things he would never admit to anyone. I woke every day happy to see him and paint him. For those few hours, I could say all that was on my mind and he did not judge me. I could not make sense of the feelings that I had when I was around him. I had never had such feelings towards anyone in my life. He listened to me carefully as I told him, then he pulled in for a hug. I never knew that that was what I needed until I was sobbing in his arms. Your art is beautiful. You are your art. You will finish both of your paintings and you will be featured at the gallery, and you will succeed. Believe me, he said softly. My heart beat fast when he said those words. I had no idea why his words affected me like that. No one's words had ever affected me like that. Who are you? What do you do to me? I suddenly blurted. I could ask you the same, he smiled. I could not handle how I was feeling anymore. I leaned in close to him and I kissed him, so softly. I stopped breathing as he kissed me back. I don't know how long the moment lasted, but it felt like forever. Our next movements were in sync. He kissed me harder, and my body responded to his. Never had anyone affected me in such a way. I had kissed many girls before, and I was always glad when it was over, but I did not want it to be over with him. We spent the night together. We did nothing more than kiss, but we spoke, till the early hours of the morning. Never had I said so many words to a single person before. He knew what it was like to try and live up to someone's expectations. He revealed to me that he'd hope one day his parents would actually take notice of him. All they ever did was travel and throw money at him, and he acted like he was not fazed by it at all. Things between us changed that night. From then on, we were so much closer. I got used to him sleeping over at my place. And when I was done with the paintings and I was waiting for the decision, he did not stop coming over to my place. We would talk for hours, share sweet kisses, and do it all again. One day, he came over while I was tidying up my studio. He seemed like he needed affection much more than in the past few days. He trailed after me, sulking as I tidied up everything. Do not care for me, he said. Big baby, I rolled my eyes. Heartless. Childish, I chuckled. The next thing I knew, I felt something cold on my cheek. I turned to look at him and he was holding a bottle of paint. You are so going to pay for this, I said as I took a nearby bottle of paint and threw it at his sweater. He smirked deviously and charged towards me. He chased me around the room, throwing paint at me. I laughed as I returned his mischievousness. The old me would have never attempted such a thing. I would be too worried about the mess, but at least I had him to help me clean up. We were both very colorful by the time we collapsed on the floor. My heart was beating so fast and I could not stop laughing. Gosh, what did this man do to me? He reached out for my hand and squeezed it once we were both out of breath. I could only shake. I did not have the strength anymore. After I had caught my breath, I turned to look at him and he was looking at me. He smiled slightly and reached out for my cheek. Oh no, don't touch me. You're filled with paint, I protested. Would you look at that? He knows how to joke, he smirked. I stuck out my tongue at him, which was very uncharacteristic of me, but he brought out a side of me that I did not know was there. 
the mischievous side of me. I looked into his eyes and enjoyed the moment. He looked like a beautiful mess. Paris, he said. Yes, B, I smiled. Will you be my boyfriend? He said. I was not shocked. We had been close for the past few weeks. I had easily come to terms with what it meant that I was attracted to him. I was not ashamed of being with him. Yes, I shouted. He laughed as he brought me in for a light kiss. We lay there for a while, whispering sweet nothings to each other. That was when I remembered that the paint would be difficult to remove. Oh shit, we have to go to the bathroom and shower. It's going to be painful to get the paint off our skins if we wait too long. Not all of this is watercolor, I said. Oh damn, he said as he jumped up. We raced to my bathroom and I started undressing. He looked at me for a moment and that was when I remembered that it was his first time seeing me in such a state. I had seen him many times before when I was painting him. I suddenly felt self-conscious and turned away from him. No, don't turn away. Your body is beautiful. You are beautiful, he said into my ear. I shivered. I was unsure of whether it was from the cool breeze or from him. I slowly turned to look at him and saw only truth in his eyes. I got my feedback from the gallery a few days later and the date of the show. I could hardly sleep in the days leading up to it. I was most nervous about the other portrait that was not nude. I didn't show anyone, not even Brad. It was different from anything that I had ever done before, and I hoped that it would impress everyone. My father told me that he and my mother would be attending. I warned them ahead of time that there was a nude portrait. It was rather an okayish conversation, I would like to think. That night, I dressed up in something formal, and my sister came to pick me up with Brad. I'm proud of you, bro, she said. Thank you. I can't believe that I'm getting my work showcased, I smiled. Oh, not that. Well, I'm proud of that, but I'm also proud that you aren't single anymore, she squealed. Uh, how did you know? I asked. <laughs> Nothing can be hidden from me. You are mistaken if you think you can hide. You guys are so obvious, she rolled her eyes. I'd been meaning to tell her, but I'd been so stressed over the past few days. Later on, after a speech from the director, the guests were free to see the work. I saw my father in the crowd with my mother. I went over to him and I greeted him. He asked to see my work. I was very nervous to show him what I had achieved. So I walked with him past many beautiful displays of other art. And then we were at my two pieces. I had tried to do justice to the one of Brad. I had gone all out with it. And it looked perfect. My mother gasped in delight and complimented it. Then they turned to look at the one that I had been most nervous about. I painted a man, half of his body in shadow and half in light. On one hand, he had a briefcase, and he looked gravely serious. On the other, he had a brush, and looked very serious. In the painting, I had poured my past, the persona my father had forced on me, and the one that Brad had tried to bring out. I could never be one or the other, but it was a part of me. My father inspired my drive, and my love had shown me passion. I tried to crush your dreams and have you live mine, he simply said, and squeezed my hand. I am happy in art, father, I said. I have seen, and with that young man I saw earlier, he responded. Finally, they understood. I was not selling my work for millions. The chances of me succeeding were not very high, but I had my family, and I had Brad, who had shown me the way out of my cave, where I had retreated when my father and mother tried to make me into someone I had not. Then Brad had shown me the blinding light, where I would not entirely fit in, but found inspiration for my art. Most of all, I was in love for the first time in my life. Love is truly the most effective medicine for a lost soul. The end. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our Rainbow Force and stay wholesome.